Hey guys, how you doing? Thank you so very much for tuning in today. It is Celebrity Zone right here on Galaxy Television. And like always, Dr. Collins, it is your favorite celebrity show on television. My name is Funke Boshi. Thank you once again for joining me today. Guys, today is like one of the happiest days of my career or in my career. Yeah. I'm right here in the studio of someone that um, he is an inspiration to the whole world, not just Nigeria. He is um, every broadcasters no dream to interview so why would i be happy today <laughs> i've got with me right here guys a musician yeah he's a songwriter he's a singer and he's a bad bad baddest music producer ladies and gentlemen <laughs> okay welcome with me today on the show he's not welcoming us because we are here to meet him but then i've got today on the show with me Cobham's a super. You know, can we be going everywhere so you'll be doing my introductions? My goodness. Oh, really? Wow. I got a new job. <laughs> <laughs> like seriously. Thank you so much for letting Thank you me so me. much. Thank you. It's it's great to share this time with you. Yeah, great to be here too. A child in the distance, playing in the rain. The sweet sound of water flowing away. Construction worker coming home from work to parents and their children going to church. A happy little baby drools on your shirt. One extraordinary day. Let us have a world of ordinary people living life the way. God wants us to And if we have a world of ordinary people Extraordinary things will happen to me and you Yesterday I watched your TEDx for the first time. It's oh. been like six, seven years. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, been, been, a, a it's been a long time. Yeah, yeah and I watched it um, yesterday, and it felt like something that I just did. I was so much inspired. So I'm wondering how Kavams that you know um, Kavams could be someone who inspires someone a lot. You know, I'm talking about. I, I saw your childhood. I heard your childhood experience where mm -hmm. you were like hmm, very, very, very troublesome child. Yeah, I was very, I was, very yeah. troublesome. <laughs> <laughs> I was quite the wild one. <laughs> Very much. So it's it's almost like you're someone that wouldn't listen if they tell you to do this and do that while you're growing up. No, well, I think it depended largely on how you told me. Oh, you know, okay. Yeah, as a child. Okay. Yeah, I was one for gentleness. Mm -hmm. If you just spoke to me gently, I would do whatever it was you wanted me to do. It didn't matter if it was good or bad. Yeah. But if you yelled at me, I'd do the exact opposite. Justin, yeah. So I'm wondering how come you ended up being someone um, like this, you know, someone who is um, inspiring, someone who is motivating, someone who has something to say at any point in time, you know, being that you grew up in a stubborn child. Well, I think common sense had always been important to me. And, mm. and you know, for me, being a, so I wasn't stubborn because I was just straight up, you know, just stubborn for no reason. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think I, I like to also think of myself as a kind child. I think yeah. I just... Um, you know, it was a matter of it had to make sense to me. Mm. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, being a child in Africa is, is is one of those situations where you do it not because it makes sense or because you are told to do it. Yeah. You know, and I think I had a few people in my life who knew that it was important for it to make sense to me. You know, so. for example, my father. Yeah. He, it was important for him to explain things to me. And okay. so, yeah, that, that, that worked for me. Yeah. Okay. Wikipedia says you started um, to 1999. I don't know if that's true. Is that true? Started what 1999 exactly? Well, I started. Well, I mean, I started to mess around with music when I was about six, seven, eight years old. Yeah. Wow. So no, that would have been sometime in the eighties, because mm -hmm. if I was born in eighty one, so that would be somewhere around um, 87, 88, 89, thereabouts. Yeah. yeah. And by nineteen ninety, I was playing for my my church, okay. and I was nine years old then. So. Wow. So maybe that maybe maybe you thought of nineteen ninety and nine years old. <laughs> I think. So they were the nine, nine, nine. By the way, come up, you're very, very much hilarious. I wonder how you do it. I think you should even try stand up comedy someday. No, don't worry. I do I know that stand up comedian someday. So. You know that TEDx um show was like you being a comedian and you being a speaker at the same time. I was like, wow, you're so very much hilarious. No. Let's talk about the fact that you started your music early, mm -hmm. like you said. And I saw a video of you saying that your mom um loved some instruments and all that and she has always hoped that one of 
her kids would end up doing music. And then at the end of the day, seeing that you had interest in music, you still went for love. Mm. Why? You just said that you just wanted to have that professional tag. I think as a child, you want to do everything you're big and bad enough to do. So first of all, my mom wanted to be a singer. Okay. And um, she used to sing to my dad on the telephone. And my dad wow. used to call like his superiors to come and listen to, you know, his madame who could sing. Okay. You know, and that kind of stuff. And my dad himself, you know, did a bit of, he was he was a DJ until he broke his turntable pin. And, <laughs> you know, so yeah, I come from a very interesting, my, my, my family is musical in a rather peculiar way. Okay. Um, yeah, but then I think law happened partly because my father and I had this conversation when I was around six, seven, and he said something about me being a lawyer. Mm. And I really looked up to my father, and that stayed with me. Plus, I felt like you could defend any position, you know, within the ambits of the yeah. law. And so, I think it was just natural for me to want to do law. So, it was—I mean, law was, and in in a lot of in 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 many ways, is still a part of me. I'm interested oh. in. I just I like I like legalese. I like the language. I like the and, and you know, as a young kid, I used yeah. to read law books and stuff like that. Yeah. So. Yeah, um, but music always had a hold on me, and I think you know, music eventually sort of won, like mm. career wise. Mm. But yes, I'm I'm sort of a low key lawyer at heart. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't even finish studying law, and I like just I like how it works. Mm. I like how you can maintain and defend a position, like I said, you know, within the law. So no, but no, I I, I didn't get the privilege of getting to practice. Okay, but then you ended up being one of the biggest people on planet Earth. So. Wow, I'm how do I even fit into this chair if I'm one of the biggest? <laughs> not literally, not by the size. I saw a lot of video, another video rather, of you saying that you learned how to play the piano yourself. Pretty much, yes. My piano playing was self-taught. I mean, I had people who drove me along the way okay. and who um, really began to tutor me and they took me under their wings. Notable among them is Mr. John Yakini. He oh. was my music teacher in primary school. He was really, he was an inspiration. He still is to this day. And then Mr. Emei in secondary school. And just, you know, the different people who just encouraged me, you know, yeah. and Mrs. Leila Fowler. Just awesome people in my life who, you know, on whose shoulders I stand. Yeah, um, yeah but, you know, it, I, I started out playing a tiny piano that belonged to my friend's sister that he didn't want her to see me play because she never played it but she wouldn't have anyone else play it you know and I, yeah. I it kind of started from there and I play you know except from sound of music and all kinds of things yeah. it just it just progressed from there when I heard you say that I was like shame on me like shame on you from care because I learned how to play the guitar back in school and um, right now I don't know what to say. I learned for few. Mm. It's just a matter and of And I was tired. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, the guitar can do that to you. I started when I started having blisters. Okay. But you can go, you can you can actually pick it up again. Yeah, yeah I can. Play it until you kill the blisters. I know, right? Mm. So I'm thinking how did Kobams pull it off? You know, teaching yourself how to play the keyboard. How did you know, you know, the right keys to play? How did you know what to do? You know, you just said it that you're self taught. Mm. How exactly did you do it? I don't think I taught, I, I don't think I thought that I was teaching myself. Oh, I think okay. I just played around and I enjoyed it. Mm. I enjoyed the sound it made. I enjoyed the logic of you move right, it goes higher, you move left, it comes lower. Mm. And I began to use just that basic, you know, logic to. Um, um, you figure out like my favorite songs yeah. so yeah it was as simple as that and then I started to figure out chords and you know little things like that so you know when you think that you're teaching yourself it becomes a chore mm -hmm. for me it was just something to do to pass time um, and I enjoyed it as a child it occupied me yeah. I wasn't playing like soccer and the other things with you know a lot of my friends mm -hmm. so I was either sitting down and gisting with my female friends or I was you know just messing around on the piano so it was it was good practice without even realizing i was putting in the work yeah you said you're not playing soccer or any other thing but would you um do you have any interest in like, any kind of sport by you hearing how people love this sport and you wish that oh i wish i could see people playing this game you know yeah maybe golf i think I, I think i have a thing for golf and i feel like when i'm finally ready like i'll be one of those people that would have like a house with an 18 hole golf course oh, or something. Wow. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think I think golf would be it for me. I remember you saying it at TEDx that um, you dream 
of playing girls and driving cars. <laughs> I, I think I'm, I think I might. I think one of these days I might just go out there. I don't know if I'll ever really hit the ball. I mean, I really don't care. But yeah. I'm just gonna go out there and mess around and yeah, and you know, and yeah, I, I think I'll do it. Mm-hmm. Okay, Kovam, you just said something that um, brought a question to my mind. So you really don't care. How do you, you know, motivate yourself? Who is that person that motivates you? You know, when it comes to you not caring about what people say, you know, you not caring about what people see and they talk about it and you don't, you know, get to see it. How do you motivate yourself and so, get yourself pushing? I'm, I'm a product of love. I've been told mm-hmm. by the people who matter in my life that I matter. So I think, you know, that by itself does a lot in, you know, inspiring a person. Yeah. My father, you know, treated me like I was the, you know, the best thing ever you know my mother treated me the same way mm. my siblings have always treated me as a favorite of sorts and so you know that just builds your confidence you mm. know so i think i've had a lot of people who have built my confidence over time mm. and yeah so it, you know it, it would take a lot to make me feel otherwise mm. because i have a lot of um, i have a strong sense of self-worth of self-respect mm. you know and um I, I like to think that I'm a self-aware person to a certain degree. You know, so, uh, self-realization, those sorts of things are really important to me. Okay. So, yeah, I think you know, in terms of that, I have a good enough foundation to to work on, and I think that that's really important. You know, yeah, the kind yes. of foundation that you lay. You know, whether it be your children or yeah. your spouse or your friends or whoever. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that you know, I have I have a strong foundation. So, I really care about what I care about based on, you know really looking at you know the internal value of it you know okay. ultimately yeah okay you've been a, you've been an inspiration to a whole lot of artists and you are still you know an inspiration to them and it's got me thinking because the kind of people that you've produced so far they are not the nigerian um street singers you know the pop songs that we hear today mm-hmm. they are always alternative r and b you know people with you know soulful songs mm-hmm. so i'm thinking and people tend to see that as good music so I'm thinking is um, how would Kobams, you know, define good music? Because everyone that comes out of Kobams production ends up being turned a good musician, a great musician. So what would you call your own definition of good music? I think good music is whatever a group of people, a, a big enough group of people accept. Okay. Yeah, so good music is constantly evolving. Yeah. There was a time when good music was classical music. There was a time when good mm. music was jazz music. I think good music is popular music that's accepted by people. The acceptance of the people make music good mm. um, to a certain degree. Mm. Yeah, some of us can, you know, come out and sound like Puritans and say, ah, in the good old days, you only yeah. played this and played that. But look, the good old days are just that, the good old days. Yeah. You know, music continues to evolve. I feel like what's more important, and this is where, you know, I come in is there is need for variety and there's mm. room for variety mm. and um, while there may be good music not one kind of music is good music you know okay. there's a variety of good music and okay. so I try to propagate I try to promote um, you know the kind of music that I feel like isn't getting as much attention in the Nigerian space and you know ironically it's the kind of music a lot of us grew up listening yeah. to you know so yeah for me I feel like you know th- that that kind of music ju- deserves you know, a fighting chance as much mm-hmm. as um, Afro beats mm-hmm. or Afro pop or you know mm-hmm. any other genre of music that is out there, yeah. which is also great, by the way, because I mean, look at what it's doing to our image. It's putting us out there. It's mm-hmm. um, giving us you know positive image, you know, yeah. in, in in the world. So yeah. yeah, it's it's good music is whatever a group of people accept to be good music. I think as long as the messaging is great and as long as it can make you you know have a good time and mm-hmm. you know and all of that, I think I begin to question how good. You know, music is when we begin to examine the content and find that you know provide it, it, it promotes violence or yeah. you know it promotes yeah. um, you know just things that are against you know the norms of our society and mm-hmm. you know the rule of law mm-hmm. and who we've defined ourselves to be. Okay, now what what would you say comes first when it comes to you know music production? Is it the message they are giving out or the tune? Because um, at least I know I can categorically say I know four of your songs word for word that's ordinary people. Boosted, um, oh, wow. do the right thing. What's that? Oh, yeah, do the right I thing. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Even it sounds like, it sounds like that. Come on, I know, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and then the reset on your list with see me that, um, with plenty. Okay, so I'm thinking all, all the songs that you've produced, at least the ones I know very well, mm. they always have. Even even though Busit is like you know funny comical, you still pass your message with messages in that song. So I'm thinking, which one would you say comes first? 
you know, is it the message and the or, or the vibe? Because these days, street the vibe. vibes. We're mm-hmm. talking about the vibe. Mm-hmm. Is the vibe and all. The that vibe. The vibe comes first because really that's what people connect with. You okay. know what I mean? The vibe is the inspiration. It's the music. It's that thing that just sounds great. That thing yeah. that moves you. Yeah. But then you now say to yourself, so you have this really powerful tool in your hands. What do you want to do with it? What do you want to say? Mm-hmm. And I think that's where responsibility kicks in. You know, mm-hmm. where you then say to yourself. So for instance, I recognize that music is important to me as a tool for social re-engineering. Music is important to me as a tool for social reorientation. Okay. So um, I always want to use my music to say something. Mm-hmm. I always want to use my music to inspire someone. I always want to use my, use my music to encourage people. Mm-hmm. I want to share my truth through my music. And so when I find a melody, I find a vibe that I think is solid. You know, I don't want it to just go out there and say nothing. So, you know, sometimes it sort of comes, it's sometimes it's it's a lot more holistic. It's yeah. it's the music, it's the melody, it's the lyric, it's everything. Sometimes it's just the music. You know what I mean? Yeah, but a lot of the times it's the music, um, okay. you know, that comes first and then everything else kind of follows. Okay. You see, Bessie, you have a Your song with plenty that you just released. Oh for yeah. See me. Mm. Oh, before I go there though, I saw a particular post. You posted, I think, Brother Shaggy's post, and you were like, "You think it is Simi that is making this song to make it because at then, as at then, it was hundred thousand views." Oh like, yeah, that happened to my song before. Song. You know, that happens with like David Doe and Simi and people like that. So I was quite shocked that that happened. And the fact that he sang um, hit song, give me one hit song. I'm like, what is Kuban saying? Yeah. Like seriously, do you think he's not blown? Yeah. Why are you thinking that it's Simi that will make you? I, you know? I, I think so. One hit, for instance, is not just for me. One hit is a reflection of the thoughts of you know the average Nigerian, not just yeah. artists, yeah. but you know the Nigerian who's just struggling, going out every day, coming back. You understand? Yeah. Earning one month salary but being asked to pay one year's rent. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just living this life and staying hopeful and hoping that one day you know you're going to be like the people you see on TV or the yeah. people you see on social media. Yeah. So for me and and beyond that just you know holding out hope that your dream will come true Mm. yeah so i think that's what one hit is about it's not so much me you know i mean i'm still looking to blow like all of me they do (laughs) but um you know i i'm 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 speaking the mind of the average nigerian who's praying and just wants a little more you know out of life Mm. and i think we deserve a little more out of life i think we deserve a little more from the people we've elected I think we deserve a little more from you know just the, the systems that we've tried to put in place you know and the many people who have failed us yeah. i think we deserve a little more yeah. so that's what one hits us about um mm-hmm. as far as we plenty goes yeah. with me and simi simi i mean the world knows simi has the voice of a goddess mm-hmm. she yeah, literally she sounds she sounds so beautiful yeah. you know what i mean I, yeah. I, I listen to my verse and my, my verse and the minute she comes in i'm like hey cool what <laughs> She sounds so beautiful. Like <laughs> yeah. listen to the song yourself. You see, you see what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, see yeah. me sounds so, and I'm not just being self-deprecating or anything. Mm-hmm. See me sounds so beautiful. I've known that voice and I've loved it for such yeah, a long time. From the teeth, I think you produced teeth, yeah. No, no, I didn't. A friend of mine, Oscar Himanaka, produced teeth. Well, produced Very good. Yeah. Well, I used to make music with Simi when she was like 14, 15 years old. We used oh, to go wow. into the studio wow. and I used to record her, like some of her earlier studio experiences. Yeah. You know, and all that. I know I don't know this, but um, the very first ever, so there's a song I produced for Mocheda titled Destiny Nambari. Okay. The song was actually originally demoed by Simi. 
Wow. Yeah, it was it was it was demo, and and you know she did a great job. Mm. And Muchada came around, and you know also just did a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic you know mm. job mm. on it as well. So yeah, Simi and I have been friends for years and years and years. Beautiful. So I want to say something about with plenty. You know uh, what you said there. I don't know if it's an existent proverb though. Like um, your beans go down. Something mm. like that. I don't know if you took it from an existing proverb. I don't know if it's an existing. So no, because when the song came out, sorry mm. to cut it short, yeah. I had to post it on my you know WhatsApp status, and I wrote the lyrics, and I wrote Kubams twenty nine. <laughs> so I want to know, is it your own? Are yeah, those your own words? You know. So the first person I, I heard say, you know, anything about beans and yeah. beans done was on my own. Oh, okay. I was having a conversation. Okay. My mom was like, "Put your beans for fire. Your beans must cook." <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, wow!" And you know, and I just remembered how you know our mothers those days would take so much time trying to you know, yeah. uh, you know, get beans ready yeah, and all that. Yeah. So that just stayed with me. And I'm like, "Not true. Beans they take time. Done. <laughs> but they don't last. Well, I don't last. know how long it will exactly. done. <laughs> so I think I kind of modified it. But the original okay. inspiration for that was a mom. Okay. Then there's a part where he said, um, "Not be only if Jesus, friend, plenty for that." Mm. You know, um, so um that got me that took me back to your wife coming out recently to talk about the story mm-hmm. of your son mm. and i'm like we actually have been thinking kobams will probably have a difficult life because of his um visual impairment mm. only for us now know that you know they have a son with the same thing and i'm like wow so we've heard your last story mm. but I don't think you've ever come out since then to talk about it. So yeah. I'm thinking, mm. how how is it like in the family? You know, I got to know that probably this could be hereditary. Now, okay, so there there are a number of things. I don't I don't first of all I don't know that there is any scientific proof that it is wow. just yet. Okay. Secondly, um, how is it like in the family? We have a great yeah. family. Like we we have we have an awesome time together. Mm. We have an awesome awesome time. My my son's a gifted piano player, and I'm really excited wow. about that. You know, we have an awesome time together. Mm. Thirdly, you know, I think my my wife wanted to share her truth, and I was just happy that you know she could come out, mm. you know, and just be honest with the world and just yeah. you know share you know her truth. And I think she's. Yeah. You know, an extremely strong woman. I think yes. she's an extremely powerful person, yes. and you know everything she shares is a testament to her power. You know, as for me, I feel like you know everybody shares what their truth is in their own time. Yeah. You know, and so first of all, I'm I'm a musician and I'm mm-hmm. someone who's inspiring people. Mm-hmm. You know, and I feel like you know that is what at this point in time I should be doing. Mm-hmm. You know, just sharing my music and inspiring people. You know how I choose to share like my personal life and yeah. all of that. And all of that is something I always like to have control over, okay. you know. And so I feel like you know my wife was in a place to share, yeah. and I think that you know she came out and she shared. Yeah. I feel like you know I'm in a place to do what I need to do, yeah. you know, and and support and all of that, and that's what I'm doing. So yeah. I feel like that's something I'm going to share, you know, more on in my own time. Like yeah. I don't ever feel the pressure to share or talk about something because that's what the world wants to hear. Because exactly. half the time you find out that the world wants to hear certain things because of mm-hmm. gist, mm-hmm. and you know people's mm-hmm. lives are beyond gist. Mm-hmm. So I'm just um, I'm just living my best life and having a good time and enjoying my wonderful family right now. I think that's what's most important. I love that. I love the positivity that comes out from you. That is out of you, you know. And I'm grabbing some, taking some right now. I need to be positive, you know. So thank you so much for always inspiring Aww. us. Thank you for being a positive. You're Welcome. I just do my bit. That's what I do. <laughs> I just do my little bit. Yeah, but then as much as you've produced a whole, you've worked with a whole lot of artists, I know there is someone out there that you still, you know, look forward to working with. That the world is person in my studio. You know, who is that person? There are a number of people I want to produce. I mean, especially in Nigeria. Um, yeah, I want to produce, um, I want to produce King Sonia Day. Wow. I, 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 I look forward to the privilege of producing him yeah, in this life. Him, yeah, I have met with him maybe once or twice. Yeah, but okay. yeah. I want to produce King Sonia Day. I definitely want to produce Lagbaja. Wow. He's like a mentor. Wow. Um, and he's an amazing producer himself. So to say I want to produce him is kind of <laughs> overreaching. I but yes, right. he, he'll be a great person to produce. Yeah. Um, I want to produce Made Kuti. I think he's um, okay. I think he's uh, he, I think he's talented 
I've, I follow the story and you know I think he's the future mm. you know and I'm, I'm really excited about mm. you know him okay mm. all right thank you so much for sitting out with me you're today welcome. You're welcome. anything you're working on that you want us to know about um yeah quite a number of things are happening i used to do yeah. something called the top 12 countdown it's actually yeah. coming back and it's going to be on radio <laughs> i'm really excited about that uh we're excited about some absolutely amazing shows that are going to come out okay. um so look out for them on social media and possibly on tv Can't yeah wait. so there's just amazing stuff and we're going to shake a lot of tables probably break a few ah! in the process all um, right, so yeah, another some, coming. Some awesome, <laughs> some awesome things coming out, and I'm doing, I'm doing new music. You okay. know. Expect a few club bangers. Expect a few out of the box. Um, wow. You know, yeah. So 2020 is a great year. I'm really excited. Mm. I can't come here and I won't hear you sing, even if if I don't get to see you do your production, because I, it's something that I've always that I would have loved to see. You know how does Kobams produce his songs? Don't worry, we'll save that one. I <laughs> should start charging gate fee. <laughs> but then uh, you will be singing, so that the game has to do with song and all that. There's a game trending. Okay. It is Song Association. Have you ever heard of that? No, I haven't. Do okay, so it yeah, is. Bush. <laughs> You ain't around. I be. I wanna be down. Uh, uh, There's many down songs. <laughs> down at your feet, oh Lord. It's the most <laughs> that I play. Yeah. Okay, another one. Go. Go. Oh my gosh. Go, shorty. It's, it's your birthday. We gon' party. <laughs> like. <laughs> okay, I plan to give you two, but the fact that this is so easy for you, I feel like giving you one more. Hey. Um, just want uh, to disgrace me in public baby 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 that one in all my life and it's baby 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 TLC uh, it's so easy for you why I always shine there's, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a ton of baby songs yeah yeah thank you so very much you're welcome guys. Finally, would you like to inspire anyone out there? Just say something to someone watching right now. Um, it doesn't matter what you're going through and how it makes you feel. The honest truth is, you matter, and the only person that can really, that has the, the only person that can give up is you, really. Mm -hmm. And as long as you don't give up, it doesn't matter how down and out you feel. Mm -hmm. You can actually pick it up and you know still make something out of it, mm -hmm. you know. And um, I don't know you, but um, I know that I love you, and I don't I don't need to know you. Um, to love you and to share my heart and my truth and my love with you and you are loved and you are loved by even someone greater than me and I think that that's what's most important so you really can do it you, you stand as much of a chance as anyone else out there who's making it you know are you willing to give yourself the chance to try mm -hmm. thank you so very much all right then thank you so very much guys for watching today thank you thank you for tuning in and a big thank you to Kobams for hosting us today my name is Funke Oshia I'll definitely see you next week and don't stop inspiring yourself and don't stop loving yourself like Kobams loves himself <laughs> bye guys see you next time Lord, I want to blow like see me a small doctor. I hope you see me, so give me one hit song, Lord. Let me blow like all I'm day.